Actually, when I was there, and this must have been, well, let's see here. Let's do a little bit of math. This probably was about uh, 17, 18, 19 years ago, somewhere in that ballpark. So that puts us, you know, back a long time ago. God, I feel old. You are, I was just going to say that. You're fucking ancient. But we went to, we went up to uh, snowboard in the Rockies. Um, and it was a great time, but it was the coolest thing. Like, uh, we went out and I wasn't. I wasn't with anybody that was, it was with some of the friends. So none of them like, you know, weren't into drinking or nothing like that, but we were just out in the, and they had a hot tub the size of the, the Kingsley pool. It was freaking amazing. It was cool as hell, but they had uh, this giant hot tub and everybody's just hanging out in there. And the sl- the snow was like softly falling. Mm. It was, it was picture perfect, freaking amazing. But the one thing that I'll always remember about that is there was some Italian dude, like, straight up freaking mob boss man like big fat italian guy just hanging out in the pool talking or hanging out in the hot tub talking to his, his guys all his minions around him just like at his beck and call like <laughs> dude standing behind him with their arms crossed in front of him. i probably I, I yeah i don't really remember it that well but all i remember is the italian mob boss that was in there and uh wow it was it was a cool country we uh i about got i about died in the rockies uh got lost and were you talking shit to this mob boss no no, I, I was not actually asking him for some of them spicy meat to bowling. <laughs> he just looks at his, his buddy and be like, hey, get this guy out of here. Uh, anyway, Hillary Clinton, that mother. <laughs> uh, but speaking of uh, guys like that, like that would be, a, you know, a, a fairly masculine guy, I would, I would suppose. You think Italian guys like that are masculine, or do they come off a little bit feminine to you? I've always thought of them as kind of femi. Of a feminine, a little. Yeah, yeah I would, I, I could agree. But I think, I like that's a whole, such a whole different culture than us. Oh, definitely. Like it's so. That's one. That that's one country that I would actually love to visit. Like I'm not that interested in going and seeing other cultures that terrible much. But I think Italy would be an amazing country. To I don't visit. know. When I think Italy, I just think vineyards and pigeons in Venice. <laughs> well, I, I, what else is there? Well, I mean, it looks like a boot. That's how, how cool. Yeah, is that? but. Uh, you... <laughs> I don't know. You can I, look at a map and see that. Uh, no, I, I just think I think it'd be a cool, cool country to to visit. Uh, that and Greece. Hang out with all your femi friends. Uh, I just I I don't think they're femi. I just think that that's the culture, and they're just. I think it has a lot to do with their accent, so and their their, um, their attire. Their, that their yeah, and their mannerisms. Yeah, they're very right. um, flamboyant. Right or over exaggerated, maybe and, flamboyant is the isn't the word. They talk with their hands a lot. Yeah, and maybe maybe they seem more femi to us almost is because that like they share a few of the aspects of the of the gay community here in America. Like, you know, they talk with their hands a lot and stuff like that. Maybe, but I would say Italian people are hell yeah, they're badass dudes. But um, I guess the reason I bring it up is because I um kind of been on a, a journey myself lately, just like uh, discovering some new, um, discovering your masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yes. I guess, I, I guess self-improvement. And I, and I text box the other day says, Hey, what do you think about doing a podcast about like, what is, what is masculine? That was literally this morning. I, yes, it was, <laughs> it was, it was. And I, and I, and you know, I, I thought it'd be an interesting topic. So box, what, what would you, and I actually, I, I put this on my Shia Works um, Facebook about what is masculinity and I asked people because I was interested what they thought it was. You know, I think everybody has a little bit of different viewpoint. But what, like, what do you define masculine? What do you define as masculinity? This took me a long time. I thought about this literally all day long. All these notes you see here, I took all these notes and I left a space for what is masculinity? And that was the last thing I filled in today about five o'clock. And I just came up with it. Some characteristics, by the way, I like that you have a nice organized notebook and a, and a, and a pen and everything. I got a piece of crap <laughs> pencil in this freaking. uh, this is just how I roll, man. <laughs> but continue. Sorry. But yeah, anyways, I came up with just some characteristics that I think are they're characteristics of a masculine person, I guess you could say. And I just wrote down some nouns here, um, or adjectives. I have 
provider. He's a protector, a teacher. He's respectful. He has confidence. He's courageous. He's willing to do whatever needs done and willingness to be violent and stands up for what is right. I would agree with those things. That I took think. me a long time to come up with all that. I would agree with those things. Um, but I will, and I did a lot of, a lot of, uh, um, kind of looking into what exactly is masculinity. And I did find something interesting and you may, you may disagree with this because up until this point, I viewed masculinity and manliness as kind of one and the same, honestly. But once I did a little bit of research, um, and, and, you know, and listened to some videos and some podcasts actually on the subject, I found out that they're actually two, two different things. Um, masculinity and, and where I kind of got this information, um, was the order of man. It's a, it's a podcast, but he also has a YouTube and the way that he described it. And, and I actually tend to agree with him. Um, and there was also a, another person that commented on my Facebook and he said the same thing. Uh, Patrick, he was taught, uh, commented on the shy works Facebook about this. Um, but masculinity is more so the, the physical aspects and the, the, t the testosterone flowing through our veins that makes us a certain way. It makes us to be, um, more aggressive, more, uh, competitive, dominant. Um, uh, and there's all sorts of physical aspects that come with that, that testosterone throwing, you know, flowing through our veins. Whereas manliness is more like the, um, you know, the, our behaviors and the way that we act, being a provider and a protector and, and all of those things that come with it. And, and, and kind of, I, I would, I would tend to agree, but I guess for, for all intents and purposes on this particular podcast, it just like, it does that, I guess that doesn't really matter. We're just talking about what is a man and what is, what is masculine. I guess, does that make any sense to you, Box? Do you, I think, do you view them as different at all? No. I think, um, I don't, what, you just defined which one was the appearance part of it? The masculinity, masculinity. Was, was the appearance part? Well, not, not just the appearance, but the, like our, our physical traits, our, 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 um, behavior, the way that we act. And I, and I noticed this, this, well, like, if your behavior is in there, then they're one and the same. Kind of. Kind of, I guess. But I I guess I just, like, uh, with uh, watching our nieces and, and nephews, especially, like, Jack. Like, you can tell, like, he's a very masculine, a masculine kid, you know? And you can see that, 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 that male coming out in him, coming out in him, whereas compared to his sisters, you know, and they're all just so effeminate and and you know and i and i i just think it's it's interesting like the the massive physical differences between the two um but at, to to this conversation i guess we'll just basically what is a man what is masculine masculinity we'll just we'll say we'll leave it in at that they'll both be kind of interchangeable I a think little bit masculinity is is defined as having having the characteristics of a man. So, I mean, sure. Manly is probably defined the exact same way. Yeah. I guess I didn't look up manly, but I did look up masculinity. Right. Right. But I would agree with your, I, w I would agree with your, um, your definition. Like the first thing you read, like all those, those traits and everything. Um, but do you have any, do any to add to them? No, I don't think so. I, I, I pretty much, I pretty much agree with that. And I didn't really dive in like too much to that, like the, the actual like definition. Uh, like I was just more concerned with, um, the, the plight, uh, not the plight, but the, the state of, of the degradation of masculinity. Yeah. yeah the state, title, the though. state of masculinity, um, in our current society i guess and one, right under where i have what i wrote down what i bought what i believe i almost said i beloved as the past tense of believe i beloved. <laughs> i worked on my my speech but not my words <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering what society believes it is 
nowadays that's hard to that's hard to uh to say because i was i was looking i was this was when i was looking into the toxic masculine masculinity part of it which we'll talk about a little bit later but everything that i found that they were referring to as masculinity was it seems to me that they see as masculinity as overbearing and violent and mm -hmm. controlling and most of all homophobic mm -hmm. like if you're if you're masculine you're totally not okay with with homos I, that's I would, like the, I would disagree with that, but yeah. Oh, I, I would 100%. say in society, yeah, they're yeah. I didn't. I and I don't know where that comes from. Like, if you're a masculine man, you're obviously not okay with 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 homo with homosexuals, right? Right, and yeah, that's that's kind of ridiculous. But I would, and I was having this conversation with my girlfriend on the way down here about uh, masculinity and stuff. Um, I feel like, and and I think I think this is definitely happening i think there's an attack on on masculinity in current society um any any display of masculinity any you know those of us that want to truly be masculine are attacked because of it um but i think there's a, a genuine misunderstanding of of what masculinity is um I and I think it's more of um true masculinity is not is not um I mean just the same as femininity there's femi there's there's feminine and there, and there's masculine and true masculinity is is um doing the right thing and being a leader and making sure that you're you're helping those around you and 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 leading and and doing all these things um, that were so necessary back in before we were a society like we are now back in the caveman days, like what was, what was the role of a man to protect and provide for his family? And that was vitally, vitally important back then, because I mean, you'd be eaten by a saber toothed tiger and that's ultimately what, you know, where this all came from. And now like in society, we've reached this point where, those things like you don't have to fight off a saber tooth tiger anymore. Like you don't have to like though, but they're, they've taken different forms. So that saber tooth tiger has now become the freaking thug down the street. That's that's slinging Molly to your, your 16 year old girl. Like those are like, that's what being a protector is about now. But there's also like they view I think I think when you when you talk about masculinity like you say they they view it as a, in in a negative sense and ultimately ultimately if it's done right and if it's in you know in check masculine is neither good nor bad it just is the same as femininity it just is um and being a ag being aggressive and being competitive those aren't bad things unless they are used in a bad way. Um, what you look like, you got a look on your face box. What's your, um, you were just saying, I wasn't sorry. I wasn't actually listening that closely. Oh, oh <laughs> <But> thanks. <laughs> thanks. I was concerned about my camera back here. Yeah. You were talking about femininity though and how it's necessary and that's for some reason they think seem to think femininity is more important than than masculinity. Right. But you we don't exist without both of them. They have it's to coexist. Absolutely. Yin yang. Mm -hmm. And I don't I, I don't know they they want to make they want to turn masculinity into femininity. I don't get it. Well, I think I think um in our current society for a long time, masculinity was not done correctly. I mean, would you agree with that? There were there were a lot of there were a lot of aspects to it that weren't done that I weren't done I right. I, I don't know. I can't really speak to that. I I would say that like um you know the viewpoint that there was for a long time there was a viewpoint that listen the woman's place is this is a woman's place in the home cook me supper and give me a beer when I walk in the house and, and sit down. And that's not, that's not, 
that's not femininity and that's not masculinity. Like if you require your woman to to serve you at your beck and call, that's not masculinity. That's not right. But should you know? And for a long time in the in the in society, like that was what that was what gender roles were. I think, and 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 there was a lot of there. You know, there was there was a lot of men that weren't that way. There was a lot of women that weren't that way. But I think that was kind of like it, it was kind of perverted for a while, almost like it was tweaked to be to be something that it wasn't. But um, I mean, ultimately, those two, as you're right, those two have to be in in balance. They're yin and yang. I don't think one can truly exist without the other. And you're saying like and what you said a little bit ago, like femininity has almost became more important. And those two can't, they can't coexist when one is bigger than the other. So what what are you, what are you saying is, uh, they're trying to make femininity, femininity larger. Yeah. I think it's, it just goes both ways. Like for, for a long time, you know, masculinity was more pre was more dominant and now it's just now it's just swung the other way it's it's just like anything um you know politics it goes it goes both ways you know you swing one way for a while and then you just like your college <laughs> years huh <laughs> you're funny i knew ex- i knew that was coming oh sorry i can't make jokes about that i'm, <laughs> I'm a homophobe now i knew that was coming um what what is your thoughts on Someone said, uh, when I was doing a little bit of research on this, someone said that there's no rite of passage for being a man anymore in America. Like, I, I, do you think that we still have a rite of passage? What is the rite of passage for being a man in America? I guess I wasn't ever aware of a rite of passage. To right. But in so many, in so many cultures, like, uh, say, uh, the Mexican culture, you know, the girl turns a certain age and they have a, what's it called? Like a quinceanero or something like yeah. that. And for the, uh, say in Jewish, uh, the boys turn a certain age and they have a bar mitzvah and stuff. And I'm sure they have those for the opposing sexes in both their societies, but. For Americans, um, or for Western society, I would say losing your virginity. Really? Yeah. I don't think that's a good thing. Well, of course it's not a good thing, but that's what it is. Or at least that's what it was when I was growing up. Yeah. What about, like, yeah? What about, like, a driver's license? Or at least in the view, well, I guess... I'm I'm thinking more in the view from the view of your of your peers, I guess, and other people of your age, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about a rite of pas- passage when your parents or adults consider you a man, I guess. Or you think it's just uh, eighteen? Maybe, like your dad yeah. shakes your hand, and that's and maybe that's, that's what that's that's what it is. Or maybe you get your first. I'm. I think it's very. I think it can be a, diff- a lot of different things. I was listening to something the other day about different cultures, and there's there's tight cultures and there's loose cultures, and America is like one of the loosest cultures that there is, and they're typically like more open and accepting to pretty much anything, and there's it means there's a wide variety of different mm-hmm. cultures, mm-hmm. and I think I lost my train of thought. I think I lost my train of thought. We were talking about this just a minute ago. You do that a lot on this show. (laughs) Amnesia. Yeah. It's a complicated thought for me, so. Apparently. Well, you think about it. Um, But I do think other cultures, like just the other day, we're at um, the park over in uh, that park by Shields, um, just down from Shields, you know, that uh, cone, cone park, I think is what it's called. And they're having a, must have been a quinceanera or something like that. But you see, like, that, that culture, specifically the Mexican culture, like, they're such a, a tight-knit community and family-oriented. But, like, that's, like, one thing they do huge is, like, the, the, the rite of passage to become a man and become a, a, a woman, you know. Mm-hmm. the I don't know what the quinceanero, but I don't know what the, the male equivalent to that is. I... I guess I do. They have a male equivalent to it. I guess I don't know. I'd be interested. I guess in I've that. never thought about that. If you they, just blew my mind. If they have, 
if they have a mail, guys, if they have a mail equivalent to that, please let us know. Message the uh, the Facebook page or the in Instagram page or wherever you can reach us at. How do you spell quinceanera? I have absolutely freaking <laughs> no idea. Good luck. Mail quinceanera. God, God bless Google Voice. Uh, it's just quinceanera, quinceaneros. So when's it like a is is a, the female? Or, is it like at fourteen or something like that? I, I think that's. But anyways, like I don't know. It's hard to define when that is for an American. Like so, it's like you never really. Like, when do you feel, as as a boy, like, when do you feel like you're really a man? Like, maybe graduating high school? Like, uh, I, I wouldn't disagree with your definition on, like, losing your virginity, I guess. But, like, I don't. I guess that's where I was going with, with, with the loose culture thought is there's so many different. It's such a large com- country, and there's so many different cultures, and it's, I don't know, it's such a large area that it can vary from one area and one family to the next. So right. I don't think there's going to be obviously one single answer. Obviously there's, there's going to be bar mitzvahs and there's going to be quinceañeras in America as well. So mm-hmm. I don't know what they, there's not going to be one single answer. I don't but think. just for, just for like, I mean that, that'd be the Jewish community and the Mexican p- community, but like the, the average everyday uh, guy living in the middle of Kentucky, you know, just born and bred American boy. Like, I don't think, I don't feel so like day he anything. takes his first dip of chew and shotguns a beer. Maybe, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I think it's different for, but, but that's, that's the thing. Like, and there's a lot of other cultures. I feel like there's like an, a defined, defined point. And this was something that was brought up. Like for Americans, there's not really like, there's not that point. Like, so when do you really start feeling like a man? I don't know. Maybe it's like, I remember one thing I I do remember um, was registering for the draft. Like you turn eighteen and you got to register for the draft, and you're like, "Holy shnikes!" Like, boy, this is I'm going to war. F- <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is real. Maybe I don't know. So it's a just a interesting thought that I would say the most. I would I don't know. I would say the most widely accepted rite of passage would probably be losing your virginity across the entire country and cultures and everything. I, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's kind of sad, but that's what I was just going to say. Like, that's sad though. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't disagree with you, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. Um, you have any other, Thoughts about losing virginity? No, no. thoughts on that specific subject before I kind of... Well, where are you going on. next? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Like, I was just going <laughs> to... <laughs> we have, all, like, we're the most organized we've ever been, and we still have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> uh, why it's not as prevalent? Like, do you feel like there's a, there is a degradation of masculinity yes. in, in uh, society? Yes. Why? Maybe you, you mean can, why do I think that, or maybe, what do maybe, I think contributed maybe, to it? Maybe you can maybe you can explain it better than than me. I'm curious why. Like, I'm confused. I'm, I'm, you're gonna have to clear up your question. Why do I think there's less mas- masculinity, or what do I think caused us to be where we're at? What's the question? Um, I was having a conversation with my my girlfriend, who's who's really kind of into this this sort of thing, this conversation. Um, so I'm I'm actually hoping we can have her on the podcast and and talk about stuff like some you know a similar subject or maybe this subject. Um, but when I told her that I felt like there was an attack on on masculinity and uh in the in the in current society, she was kind of I wouldn't say that she didn't agree, but she was kind of confused why I thought that. Like, why do you think like there there is an attack on? I wouldn't say really an attack, but just like, you know what I'm saying? I guess I would just say yes. Yeah, and why do you why do you feel that way? I think um, maybe this isn't the great greatest answer to your question, or doesn't answer it really at all. But I think this is a move to remove gender roles and build on their gender fluid 
um, agenda. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. I think it has nothing to do with how men actually are and everything to do with just simply removing gender roles. I guess I would, I would, I would, yeah, I could agree with that. Sorry, I'm, I'm putting some ice in my cup here, guys. He can't concentrate when he's putting ice in his cup. No, no. But ultimately, ultimately, what's the goal of that is, is I, I guess, I guess most people that, sorry, I guess most people that like don't converse about this on a semi-weekly basis like we do, don't think about things like this. Well, women don't either, and women especially don't either. Right. Which is kind of why I thought it'd be interesting to have her on tonight to see that point of view. Right. And and hopefully, like I said, hopefully we'll get her on at some point and we can we can chat about this. But I don't know. I I would say there's definitely a degradation, degra degradation, and almost an almost an attack on masculinity in the current society. Well, I don't think it started. As an attack, I think it's a it's it's a result of society as itself. It first created society itself first created these people that wanted to create this attack. I guess is what you're saying. I what something interesting that I found earlier is testosterone in men has actually dropped one percent per year since the 1950s. That fucking really? blew, that blew my mind. That's scary. Yeah, right. And I was and that. That got me wondering, like, where do where do you think it went? What caused that? Why have we been on such a steep decline since the 1950s? I have a couple theories. So do I. What are yours? My first theory would be more um, a lot of unhealthy eating. Um, I think fast food. I think uh, synthetic materials that we're eating. Uh, all sorts of things. That would be number one. Number two would, and I think this might be almost overshadows number one, would be just our comfort levels. Like we've created a society, like essentially it was, we're in the epitome of of civilization right now. Um, and even since the the 50s and the 60s, it's been pretty freaking, pretty freaking uh, comfy since then. Like, you know, and and now we've reached the, the 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 peak. It feels like you know you have on demand whatever you want to watch at your at your fingertips. On demand whatever you want delivered to your house within you know as far as food within half an hour or any material goods within two days. You know, I think that probably has a lot to do with it. There's no there's no you don't have to fight for anything. You don't have to. You don't have to work your ass off and 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 sweat and bleed and and all those things. I think that probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah, that's <clears throat> diet was literally the first thing on my my list of what I thought um, has been causing it. Obviously, or processed foods and all that shit have been through the roof since the 1950s. But TV dinners, you know. yeah, that kind of shit. But Another thing along, like I have instant gratification, which is pretty much what you were just talking about mm -hmm. as well. But we had talk, we have talked, it's been a few episodes ago now. We were, you were talking about your dopamine baseline. Yeah. And dopamine and testosterone pretty much run together. Really? If, your, tes if your testosterone goes up, your dope, your dopamine is probably also going to go up. I mean, that's not, that's not a guaranteed, but mm. if your dopamine goes up, your testosterone goes up I when you have testosterone, like effort feels good and all, all that stuff, like working is feeling great when you're. So that's why I feel better when I go out for a run. Uh, probably. Okay. I mean, I'm not a f***ing scientist, but. Interesting. That's, I, that's I, what I never, I've got out of I it. I guess I'd never heard of the correlation between those two. Uh, did I recommended the Huberman Lab pod, podcast to you a while back. Did you ever listen to him? I have uh, Andrew He's, Huberman. Yeah. Yes. I've listened to him. He's got it several podcasts on on those kinds of subjects but back to the point here i'm wondering if like the average dopamine level in people is is lower than it was 50 or 70 70 years ago cuz i don't know if cuz the 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 dopamine baseline you were talking is just like where you're riding at that's where you're at you pull out your cell phone or something you look at your so, your social media that's a dopamine hit 
you go up on this roller coaster, you throw it, you put your phone down, and all of a sudden you're mm-hmm. crashing. So I don't know right. if that brings the average dopamine level down, thus bringing your testosterone down. I don't. Do you think that could have something to do with it? Because that, I mean, social media, cell phones, like you were saying, instant gratification, porn, all that shit. I would think it would have a do lot you, to do with it, yeah. Absolutely. Do you, you think that people's dopamine levels are just generally lower? I don't see how they couldn't be. Because, like, we're talking about, like, um, before, like, with these, with, with like, it used to be like you could walk outside and, you know, the, the, the hummingbird uh, sucking on the flower over there or even the, the robin sitting on the grass. Like, those things, those things would be, bring would bring you happiness, which would ultimately be dopamine. But when we get to the point where, and, and we talked about this, you know, few, several episodes back, um, when we're so oversaturated with, all sorts of shit on our TikTok feed. You're th- you're scrolling through those, and every interesting video that you hit gives you a dopamine hit. You know, and 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 your brain is not wired to have that much, um, have that much pleasure. I guess have that much dopamine. So then then you crash, and those things like that the that robin and the hummingbird don't become as interesting anymore, and you lose you lose the you lose the enjoyment of them so i don't understand like absolutely i think if normal i think i think when normal life doesn't become as enjoyable for us anymore that absolutely will have to like your baseline dopamine level is going to be lower you're not going to enjoy life as much i would think absolutely i think you would be probably correct in that assessment like we're not scientists here, guys. Like, don't base your. Oh, we're actually very stupid. <laughs> don't. But I mean, it, it makes sense. It, it absolutely makes sense. I mean, it's reasonable to to think that, right? Uh, yeah, I would agree. And you you pair that with diet and the fact that we don't have to 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 strive anymore. We don't have to to beat the railroad stakes in, or we don't have to use a pickaxe and and go mine coal mm-hmm. anymore. Like you go to the fucking Apple store and you sit on your ass and serve a few people or you sit in the the cubicle and and granted, I understand there's still very physical jobs, but overall, overall in American society. And I would say, well, the, the, the modern society as a whole, the effort level has gone way, way, way down. So yeah, I would, I would, I would think that's got a lot to do with it. I was wondering also, we were talking about dopamine levels here, and I guess, God, I keep losing my fucking train of thought. Um, one thing I did want to talk about was porn and, and masturbation. Okay. <laughs> um, That kind of goes along with social media, and this is where I was going, I guess. I saw something an interesting stat the, uh, the other day. It was m- men, or I think, I don't know if it was men or all, or just young adults in general, men and women under 30 were having like less sex than ever before. Mm -hmm. And I was looking some, watching something earlier today about how porn affects you, affects your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of in the same way, like social media does. You get this dopamine hit, you get this, this testosterone hit when you're watching this porn and it's great. And you're like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. Mm hmm. But after a while, you keep watching it and you keep watching it and you do it you know, three, four, five times a day for you crazy fucks like you probably. <laughs> but then there's there's no longer that testosterone there. There's no longer that drive there for, for actual sex. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Do you think? 100%. Do I, do I think it's having an effect on our dopamine and our happiness levels and our sex levels? Or our, our, I guess our greater subject, maybe that's a better question, an effect on masculinity or that. Yes. I think it's perverting. People are less, they feel less inclined to have sex because they have porn. Mm-hmm. And that just drives them deeper and deeper into this hole. 
And then they keep watching more and more porn because yep. they get less and less of a hit of dopamine and testosterone from it. Yeah. I that does I don't even doubt that a little tiny bit. A hundred percent a hundred percent agree with that. And and porn is actually ultimately, I mean, it's like a drug. Um yeah. it's it's a it's addictive. It is and if you if you've ever done drugs, if you ever drank, you understand that like you start off and a little bit does it for you. And then you get a little bit more and you need a little bit more to get that same dopamine hit and, and pretty soon you're getting into some some kind of weird shit. Like that's just that's a hundred percent the way drugs and dopamine and everything works. So yeah, I absolutely one hundred percent think that that has a lot to do with it, and I think and I think that porn has a lot to do with. Um, I think it probably has a lot to do with the massive, massive rise of. I mean, divorce and, and trouble in relationships and, and all sorts of things. And, and the, think about it, man. Like there's, you don't have to go to the, the store anymore. You like, you don't have to go to the back alley and buy these drugs anymore. Like it's literally right in your pocket. Like any freaking time of day, that drug that you're addicted to, you don't have to buy it anymore. It's free. It's ever, yeah. Like I think it's a massive problem in society. I 100%, 110% agree with that assessment. I, I, I think so. And I think it's a dangerous, dangerous thing that needs to be, like, you as a man, like, as a self-respecting man that, that wants to love your woman, like, I think you very need to be very, very, very careful how you use how you use the, the that and the the modern tools that we have at our disposal nowadays. I would agree. We were talking about Huberman Lab earlier, and I would I would recommend any of you to listen to him some of his stuff. He's a neuroscientist at Stanford. He's a very smart dude. He doesn't talk about it. It's not just opinions and stuff. This is scientific shit facts. that he's this is shit that he studies and he talks about how it affects your brains and the and the neural pathways and shit mm -hmm. and how just how everything is affected in your brain and this is studies they've done over years and years and it's not just like oh well we think this does a little bit of this this is they tell you mm -hmm. this is how this affects your brain mm -hmm. so and i'm not telling you or i guess they're not he he doesn't tell you Stop doing this. He's just giving you an idea. Hey, this is how this affects you. Use right. it wisely. Use this information wisely. Yeah. He is a, he, like, he was on, the first time I saw, I was exposed to him, I think, was on the Joe Rogan podcast. And he doesn't look like, he doesn't look like the typical. Oh, no. Like, I thought he was like a fucking badass military dude or something. Like, do you know his background? I don't follow him that closely. I, I don't know his background. I know he wears long sleeves because his arms are fucking tatted up. Yeah, like, a like bitch, though. The dude looks like a legit bad, bad dude. Like, and it's, it's super interesting to me that a guy like that could be, could be as, as intelligent as he is. Like, he is ridiculously smart. He's a he's a straight up scient like he is a scientist like he knows all it it's amazing it's amazing to me and I I enjoy listening to him um and and I hope that one day like this podcast could have a, a dude as intelligent as that guy is on on I don't on know if that's ever gonna happen no so if you're a neuroscientist and you happen to be listening <laughs> to this podcast and you let us get know. interviewed by a bunch of dipshits we'll have you on. I think that's a, yeah, I I I don't know. He he's a very very interesting uh guy to me though. But I think you talking about talking about porn and the the um what, what what how do I how do I word that? The problems um with men nowadays in America. Um I, I saw an interesting stat or heard an interesting stat while I was listening to to podcasts researching this specific topic. 78% of suicides are by men. And, but yet there are only one third of men in therapy or one third of people in therapy are men. 
which tells which obviously says that the overall majority of people having mental issues are men, but they are far less likely mm-hmm. to seek help. How many? I wonder if there's stats on how many of those people are mili- are military. I would say a good a good good amount of them. I um, wonder what that number comes down to if we exclude military. I don't know. I would say it'd still be pretty. I would say it's. I would imagine quite a few. I would imagine. But I think, like, there's such there's such a stigma, such a massive stigma on mental problems being talked about, and it's it's weird to me because, I mean, we talk about like my gut, like my gut hurts. I'm gonna tell you, you know, my foot hurts. I'm God, gonna you're tell being such you. a bitch. Right, right. But when it comes to it comes to a mental issue, hey, I'm having a I'm having a hard time with this situation. Like, why are we so hesitant? Why are we so? Why do we not talk about that? And I think, box, I was ribbing you a little bit before the show, and I'm just giving you shit. Like, hey, I'm gonna point this out at you. But is is there a reason? Like, and and maybe I I don't know, but like, you don't like to talk about emotional things, like. My my neighbors died uh, last week. Actually, it's uh, an older couple that that I that I helped out, and my dog went up to see three or four times a week. and And Box came into the shop the the following day. It happened on a Tuesday, and handled it perfectly. <laughs> he nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. Actually, I told Kendra about it, and I chuckled. I laughed. But that happened on a Tuesday, and Box came in the next that when that following Wednesday. And I and I and I told you what happened, and I just got a call of that like a quarter to nine that previous morning, and I was I I was choked up, um, because I get emotional about things like that, um, and he came in that afternoon. I was telling him about it, and I got a little bit emotional, and and through the course of the day, you know, when I'm do I was doing something very very monotonous, and my brain, the way that my brain works is if there's something that I'm upset about it just cycles over and over and over and over and over. And I and I and I was I was sniffling a little bit over there in the corner and and Box says, "Hey, you got a cold?" You know, and I don't know if you actually thought I got a cold or you you know you were wondering if I was if I was tearing up a little bit. And I and I was. That's just how my that's just how my phys, my my body works. Like that's how my brain works. But and I and I find it fascinating though because you're you're my brother, but yet we're so very different on the way that we express our our feelings. And I'm putting you on the spot right now, and I understand that, and I apologize. But is there a reason you think like you you're so uncomfortable expressing your your feelings to to other people? I don't think I'm not as bad as I used to be. And to be be fair, in that in that particular moment that day, I did not know you were as close to them as you as as you were. Mm-hmm. So I did. I thought, oh, maybe he's got fucking allergies or something sure. like that. Of course, sure. it crossed my mind. But I was like, surely he's not sitting five feet away from me, putting stencils on this thing, crying over there. So maybe I'll just rib him a little bit. I wasn't gonna be like, <laughs> yeah. hey, bro, you crying? <laughs> that's that's not my that's not my style, right? But, I don't, and, and to it's, be, e- it's easier for me to open up emotionally when I'm not the one to open the door to do it. Sure. I can't, that's not something I can do. Once the door is sure. open, I'm a little bit better at it. I'm not going to say I'm like right. great at it. I don't know. I think it stems from just my, I don't know, how, my whole fucking life. <laughs> being the youngest in the entire family and every time I would yeah. complain or say anything even in school like uh, I was always an outcast in my class every time I would mm-hmm. say anything someone would make fun of me for it and I think I don't know I kind of think that's where right it kind of stems from that plus we're I mean we're not exactly a very emotionally open family like that no I don't know no, other families are a uh, lot different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, and I, I totally get that. I understand. I understand that. Uh, I, I remember, and you're right. We're not like, I, I, I would feel like we're semi healthy emotionally, you know, uh, emotionally healthy family. 
but I remember the first time I I even saw my dad cry was when my my grandpa passed away, and that would when I was just like thirteen. Um, and I think that's probably the same way for a lot of people. But yeah, I and I and I get that, and people are people are totally different too. Like just like the way that the way that losses like that hit them. But to me, to me, like I'm just an emotional dude. Like and 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 that's okay. Like everybody, everybody's different. You're not that emotional, and that's 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 fine. But I really am. I'm pretty Are fucking. You? I'm pretty fucking emotional. I just don't show it, which I guess right. comes in the our conversation here. Yeah. And why do you why do you think that is? Do you think do you, that's just the way that you are, or do you do you do you think that you're that way because you think that a man is supposed to be that way? No, I don't. At least not consciously, I'm not that way because I think, oh, well, if I cry in front of these people, they're going to think I'm less of a man. I don't, that doesn't cross my mind. It's just, right. I don't want to cry in front of these people, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. I think it took me a lot of years to, to figure out that it's okay to be, to be emotional. Um, I, I, and and I'm not like this way. Like I'm, I I will talk to you guys about it. Like as a, our podcast audience, and um, you know those that are close to me, you'll tell literally the entire world <laughs> and the people that are close. To but me. to me, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. But it took me a long time. It lo- took me a long time to get to the point where I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Like my emotions are my emotions and I will put them out there because they're, because I understand that it's better for me to get them out of my body. And that's why, um, and I, and I told, I think I told you guys this on a a previous episode that I started journaling. Um, and I still do that. Um, just because I figured out that it's better for me to get the, the, these thoughts out of, out of my head. And once I write them down or tell them to somebody that it, that it helps me, uh, helps me a lot. So how does this tie into our whole theme here of that, masculinity? That I think this is something that's, that's massively overlooked like emotions like uh, got m- m- men are supposed to be and this was a theme that I that I that I ran into a lot when I was researching this is men are supposed to be shut your mouth and swallow your emotions and um it it, it is what it is um struggle with it and keep it to yourself and take it to your grave but ultimately that's that's the 100% wrong solution and I think I think for so many years in America that was that was just the what it is, but I don't think that there's I don't think there's anything wrong with talking to your friends and your family about this shit. I think I think that it ultimately helps, and that's one thing an interesting thing that if you talk to someone um, that was close to a combat veteran towards the end. There is always that, it seems like that, always that common theme that, hey, he started opening up and he started, he started getting this stuff out. Like, you know, what dad, dad was told, said that about Kurt. Like, Kurt was the most closed up uh, uncle of ours, closed up guy about that for years and years and years. And once it got toward the end, you know, he had to get it out and, and, you know, started talking a little bit more about that. And I think that's just so true of everything. Like, I think it's important to talk about things and and I think it's frowned upon in our current society for a man to do that. Do you, would you agree? I think it's getting better slowly. I do. Uh, yeah. Um, I, when I was looking into toxic masculinity, that is, and hear me out here. That is one part of it that I can sort of agree with. But mm. I don't agree with, like, the shit that I read, the way they word it and stuff, and the reasoning behind it is just god-awful. But the fact that men cannot talk about their their emotional feelings or whatever, their mental, their mental health and shit they're going through. But toxic masculinity, it drove me crazy how they fucking, how they defined it. It was, 
men can't talk about their emotions because other men are going to view them as homosexual. Is, is, is that a thing? Do people do that? Like, if you talk about, like, is the, does this here make us make us homos? Because we're talking about our feelings. <laughs> You're talking about your feelings. Are we gay? Are we gayer than we were for this? No, but I think um, I think that was probably a female that wrote that because she doesn't understand that. Like when you, she's she's not wrong. She's not completely one hundred percent wrong. But what she views, I think she is wrong. Well, she is wrong, but she saw she saw that men like. Oh, you're you're. Gay, they tease you know? each other. Yeah, they tease each other, and you say, "Hey, you know, this is this is gayer of you to say that, or whatever." Which, you know, shit, it's 2022. Like, I understand you're not supposed to say that, or whatever. But, but between the teasing and the, you know, I understand what she's saying. I completely disagree with it. But at the same time, I I think that men should be able to. I think it's hard though because like you it's not often that you find a friend to find someone that you're comfortable actually exposing your feelings to. You know what I mean? Like I had a situation a few weeks ago where one of my one of my good friends who's never like we've always been fairly close, real actually very close. But he never really opened up to me about something and, and he called me at like 1130 one night and says hey I'm struggling with something can I come in and talk to you I says it didn't matter what the hell I go on, had going on the next day it didn't matter if can I had you to give us up. all the details who it was and what their problem was <laughs> no <laughs> it didn't matter if I had to be up at three in the fucking morning or if I you know I had didn't matter what the hell I go on I had going on if someone calls me and asks me that you're goddamn right you're goddamn right, and you can come in whenever the hell you want, and we'll chat about it just to make you know whatever you want. And I think that's I think that's that should be what masculinity is defined as, like being there for those who need you and being able to open up about shit that's troubling you. I don't think like that kind of stuff. They try to throw that all into oh, this is just because you're you're a man and you're trying to be masculine. I don't think that has anything to do with masculinity. I think that that's just being a shitty person and the way you were raised and right. the way you go through the way you go through life, what you were taught, what your father taught you, what your mother taught you, the way you went through school, how you how you respect people. I don't think that has anything to do with masculinity or the I feel like I'm a man. I can't talk to you about this. I think if you're not willing to do that kind of stuff for your friends, I think that's just being a shitty friend. I don't think it has anything to do agree. with being a man. I would agree. I would agree. That bothers me. And that's all I got to say about that. You were trying to switch the subjects into tox toxic masculinity. Well, I wasn't I, trying, but... Uh, that, that phrase irritates me quite a bit. And I think it's because I think the reason it irritates me is it's been so politicized and so overused that it's just become a negative. It's just become a completely negative thing and a tool to attack masculinity overall. Would you agree with that? Yeah. As, like I was saying, it's attacking. Well, the way I was... I or that we agreed that we would define masculinity being a provider and a protect protector. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to do away with the people that will, and also throw into that doing the right thing or standing up for what's right. They're trying to do away with the people that will do that. Will stand up for what's right. Right. And I, I think, I think. Um, before I go back into toxic masculinity, I think you're absolutely correct. And the reason for that is we haven't had, we haven't had a world war. We haven't had a massive war. We haven't had a massive thing where we needed masculinity to save us, um, for quite a while. And they, they forget that the, the reason that society is to the point that it is, 
is because there were masculine people and there was well there there are feminine people like that's that's super important but you're absolutely right but um as far as toxic masculinity goes i i think I don't know. I kind of lost my train of thought on that too, but I can't believe you'd do that. What a <laughs> loser! That was like that was like the first time in like five or ten episodes, or I've I've actually said I've lost yeah, I've my done train it like of thought four times tonight. As as for the need of masculinity in our society, like this society would not exist. This current society, especially America, would not exist without masculine men or feminine women like i'm not let's let me make this clear you you can't masculinity does not exist without femininity those two are mutually exclusive i i truly truly feel that but how many times like we'll say world war one world war two like those those masculine men went over there. They're scared of shit. Let's be honest here. A lot of them were 18 years old. Can you imagine being an 18, 19 year old, 20 year old on the beaches of Normandy, scared shitless, knowing what you were going up against oh. and still having like the courage to, to, to get in that boat and to jump off that boat and do that. Like that was, that was what masculine men got us. They, they, they saved the world from that. But at the same time, the reason that was possible was because of, of femininity and, and, and the females in our society. Those two are mutually exclusive. They can't exist without one or the other. Um, but as we talked about earlier, like the, the massive suicide rate in men and the, the, the jobs that men do as, as opposed, you know, work in our sewers and 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 pour our roads and build our skyscrapers and and all of this hard ass shit that they do but yet they've got such a horrible rap and it's i think it's it i don't know it's a, it's unfortunate that but women can do all those things you're absolutely right 100, 100 they can. freaking percent sure. you're damn right but they don't well they do well, sure, but not at the rate the men do. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are there are men and a lot of men that do those, mostly men, but there are a hell of a lot of women that do them too and they do them just as good, but the the percentage is far fewer. That's not saying that that's not saying that women can't do them and the women aren't just as capable as men in, in doing those. They absolutely friggin' are. We're not saying that. Um but overall you have to you have to understand that 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 the massive sacrifice that men make for this society. Um, the one thing I other I also noticed was, um, or I also ran into when I was when I was thinking about this, um, or researching this was Jordan Peterson's quote. You know what I'm talking about, box. Yep. The, uh, a harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very dangerous man that has it under voluntary control. And I would 100% agree with that. I think that's not saying that a weak little little man is not a decent man, but that good man is, I think that's so important for us to be, us to be willing to do the unthinkable should the, should the circumstances come to, come to it. What's your thoughts on that quote? Yeah, well, we talked about it a little bit more at length mm -hmm. before. I mostly agree with it, yeah, and that's one of the characteristics that I had listed of masculinity was the willingness to to be to be violent. So, I don't know. It seems like... Um, opponents of masculinity, they see it as if you have a willingness to be violent, you're a bad person. They don't see it as, oh, you have the capability to be, be violent and stand up for what's right, but you don't. 
you're you're an all right guy. They see it, oh, you have the capability, you're a bad person. You intend to use that for nefarious purposes. They don't they don't see that the way that we do to use our violent capabilities to protect those and what we love and our own. Right. Our own shit. Right. Violence in, violence is not the ability to do violence. The ability is not a bad thing. Like that is a very, very, very needed thing. I think that's been proved time and time and proven time and time again throughout uh, society or throughout the history of the world. Um, but yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand how they could come to that conclusion that someone that is ready to do violence, someone that is willing to do violence, but yet keeps it in check is a, is a, is a bad person. That that just baffles me. And at the same time, they're seeing all the terrible things that go on in this world, and they're the ones yelling, "Oh, the world is so violent and terrible! How could you possibly want to learn how to fucking fight against it?" Right. Well, I don't know. I don't want to just lay down and die. Right. For one, I want to. I want to protect my wife. I want to protect my kids, my family, my um, home. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That and that should be your number one priority is is being able to protect those that that depend on you. Um whether that's your that's your wife, your girlfriend, your your children, your your just your immediate family, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, whatever it is. You're goddamn right. And and that's I don't think I think that's severely underestimated like the 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 willingness like if you if you i don't think i don't think they understand that we're willing to die for the the people that we love as far as like say say my my girlfriend i would i would rather die than let harm come to her and and the same way with with my the rest of my family i don't think that people really truly understand that and people value that as much as they should or, you know, I just, I think that that's a, a very underestimated value. But oh, what are you, what are you look, trying to look up over there? I had, I totally forgot about it. I should have talked about this at the beginning, now that you brought it up, I guess. When we were talking about what masculinity is, mm -hmm. I came across a poem called True Manliness earlier, okay. I guess, and now this one's where... We're here. I'll, I'll read it. It's a little bit long, and I'll try not to let me do my pitter-patter-pitter-patter, patter, patter, <laughs> tittle-tattle. All right. My mouth exercises. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is True Manliness by James F. Clark. A false notion of manliness leads boys astray. True manliness is humane. It says, we who are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Its work is to protect those who cannot defend themselves, to stand between the tyrant and the slave, the oppressor and his victim. It is identical in all times with the spirit of chivalry which led the good knights to wander in search of robbers, giants, and tyrannical lords. Those who oppressed the poor and robbed helpless women and orphans of their rights. There are no tyrant barons now, but the spirit of tyranny and cruelty is still to be found. The good knight today is he who provides help for the blind, the deaf, and the dumb, and the insane, who defends animals from being cruelly treated, rescues little children from bad usage, and seeks to give working women their rights. He protects all these sufferers from that false manliness which is brutal to weak. The true knights today are those who organize to prevent cruelty or to enforce laws against those who for little gain make men drunkards. The giants and dragons today are those cruelties and brutalities which use their power to ill-treat those who are at their mercy. True manliness is tender and loving. False manliness, cold and hard, cynical and contemptuous. The bravest and mo most hero heroic souls are usually the most loving. Garibaldi, Kossuth, Mazzini, the heroes of our times. Luther, who never feared the face of man. Gustavus, Adolphus, and William of Orange are examples of this union of courage and tenderness. Bold as lions in the defense of the right, such men in their homes and their private life have a womanly gentleness. False manliness is unfeeling with no kindly sympathies, rude and rough and overbearing. True, manly, true manliness is temperate, it is moderate, 
It exercises self-control. It is capable of self-denials and renunciation. False manliness is self-willed, self-willed and self-indulgent. I really like that. Yeah, I would agree with all that. Absolutely. There were a few parts in there that some people may have some issues where like true manliness and true manliness is tender and loving, but I, I, I disagree. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Guess when this was wrote? 1921. Like, I think it was 1889. Really? Does not sound, that sounds like something that could be written pretty recently to me. Yeah, I would agree. Well, and I think you, you said some, some people would have issue with, Manliness being tender, tender and loving, and loving, but I don't. I I would hundred percent disagree. I think I think that is the the measure of a man is being willing to be to. I mean, obviously you have to have that hard side and to do the things that need to be done, but at the same time you need to be able to lower your guard and to to do you know show that side of you that's that's part of being a man is empathy and and understanding and kindness and and, and love of your fellow man and you know especially your family and your your significant other i think that's vitally important so i would i don't i think if anyone disagrees with that they don't truly understand truly understand what a man should be yeah so what, where are we? <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we pretty much, I think we pretty much got her nailed. Got her. I mean, I have uh, quite a few other things. Well, let I wanted to talk about, but let let's let's hear them. You got the the main. Well, we never really covered. We didn't cover toxic a lot of manu- masculinity itself. I mean, we right. talked about it in relation to a lot of other things, right? But I was, I was, I was trying to figure out what exactly toxic masculinity is and how other people that are proponents of it are actually defining it. So I was looking into it earlier and one of the videos that I watched, it started off, it said, toxic masculinity does not criticize masculinity itself. And it goes on to say that mas- to- toxic masculinity refers to the adherence men have to societal standards that can prove to be harmful to men and society excel itself. Then it goes on to also say they exhibit traits such as aggression, being stoic, physical and mental toughness, emotional insensitivity, self-sufficiency, discrimination against everything, not heterosexual. How the well, the first three or four of those, what were the first few? Aggression, being stoic, physical, and mental toughness. Those three are not bad things. No. In well, aggression, I mean, it depends. I mean, no, unless you, if, you can't, if you can't ac- control your aggression. Being, aggression. Okay, yeah, you're absolutely right. But being aggressive is, is not a bad trait. That is a 100%. That is a good trait in many, well... It's neither good nor bad. It's totally how the person uses it. Being stoic, 100%, that's good. What was the the next two after that? Um, emotional insensitivity, self-sufficiency. Yeah, God, fucking emotional, terrible there. Emotional insu- er, insensitivity. Yeah, that's generally a bad thing. Yeah, that's the, that's the one part where I was like, okay, I can sort of right. get with that, but I don't think that has to do with just, that's not just guys <laughs> right. trying to be guys. That's... Right. Self sufficiency and discrimination against everything not heterosexual. Uh, well, the the whole heterosexual comment goes back to the the conversation we had a little bit ago about being um, just screwing with each other and joking around and stuff like that. That's yes. just that's just locker room talk. It doesn't really. But yeah, um, yeah, I would I would say that's a massive misunderstanding of what. <laughs> masculinity really is like there's not there's nothing wrong with being self-sufficient there's nothing wrong with being. i don't understand how that could be right i right. think i i have a note i don't remember if this was in the video or if this was just as a thought i had i also have written down here also defined as trying too hard to be a man which that i can see the fucking 
macho guys where they go to the gym every day and they lift just so they can get huge and they disrespect everyone and they're just general in general fucking assholes. Right. Th- that has nothing to do with masculinity. That's just being a shitty person. Right. I would agree. I would agree. Um, but yeah, and and I was having a like I said, I told you guys earlier, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend on the way down here about this specific topic, uh, toxic masculinity. And I said, I feel like it's a double negative because not, not truly a double negative, but it's true. Masculinity is, is, um, just being a good person, being, a you know, looking out for those around you, caring for those that you, you know, caring for those around you that you love, um, being a leader, being, you know, showing empathy towards others overall just kindness and being a good person. And I feel like when you add toxic in front of that, like it's a total negative thing. It does, it changes a good thing. Like that'd be like saying toxic kindness. Like it's almost like, but then she pointed out to me, well, yes, but there are some instances where like men are, um, generally testosterone it will cause you to be sl- more more aggressive uh stronger physically usually um, um more competitive more argumentative sometimes things like that and when you when you combine them with the, the toxic aspect then they could become toxic but i hate that word i think it's become politicized i think it's become used to 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 uh make paint masculinity in a negative light so i'm not i hate using that word i don't like that word or the phrase toxic masculinity i think it's been i think it's a i think there are a lot of men that are 100 percent toxic in this world and we should call them out on it but I don't, but women can be the same exact way. Absolutely. 100%. Estrogen does the same shit. It cut, like, think of a pregnant woman. (laughs) Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Let's, let's not, let's call, not call pregnant women toxic feminine in your box. (laughs) Well, no, I'm talking about how their hormones affect them and their moods. Mm -hmm. They can, it fucks with them, like, in a severe way or when, well, not even during their special time of the month. Well, not even that. Like, there is, there's women that I know that are horrible, horrible, horrible individuals, women that you know, um, women that have done things to me in my life. They were awful, awful fucking things that, you know, that was that was fucking, you could call that toxic, toxic femininity. femininity. Absolutely. It's the same. It, it goes both ways. But my point was. That word, that phrase is being used to frame masculinity overall in a negative sense, when when generally we need masculine men, we need more of it. We are we're actually we're we're actually starving for masculine men in America and the world itself. If the, if if we were actually truly, if if America had truly masculine men, that everything would be a hell of a lot better because of these. Tr- you know, they would be doing the right things. They would be. They would be treating others with respect. They would be, they would be being reasonable, you know, but I, I understand where they're coming from with a toxic, like when you add that phrase, the add that, but I just don't like it. I think it's a negative aspect. I think it's a negative, uh, negative phrase. I don't even, I'm, I just flat out don't agree with them, I guess. Like I said, it's just being a shitty person. To think only men can be shitty people because, I would agree. because I would agree. simply because they're a man and the hormones that their body has right. is fucking bullshit. Oh, yeah. Women can be bitches because of the hormones that run through their body. 100%. And, and if you I don't know. Being a shitty person is not is not exclusive no. to one gender. <laughs> like No. It's both of them. Sorry folks. One thing I uh, came across researching tox- toxic masculinity was apparently there's a couple of different kinds of of masculinity. Oh, do tell. One of them is orthodox manu- or masculinity. What? Yep. 
which is worth just dox. it's orthodox. There's the expectation to sacrifice to sacrifice your body, which is men are expected to sacrifice their body for the good of their family and or their team. There's also isolation, which men are expected to put social and emotional distance between themselves and other men. And they had to include gay men in there for some reason and women and their own families, including their children. Also violence and a, that's what I, this is one thing I didn't get sports are often the primary training ground for violence. Men are trained to risk and take risks and flick inflict and suffer injuries and play through pain. Sports are totally terrible and masculine and training everyone to be violent and awful and kill each other. Then there's also the gender straight jacket. Boys and men are forced to mask their feelings and deny any need for help. Men are not allowed to transgress into feminine domain, domains and are penalized if they do. So men's options for workplace, sport, emotion, caregiving, etc., are limited. No, oh, I, I mean, which I, that I, one that is the only one that I can even sort of agree with. Right. But then there's this next one. This oh, is what got me to. This is what got me to screenshot this bullshit and want to talk about it here. There's also inclusive masculinities. Which you can imagine how good this is going to be with a word like inclusive. The first one, physical affection. Men enjoy physical tactility, not only hugging, but cuddling together and a kiss, in parentheses, on both the cheeks and lips, shows friendship. More so, the boundaries of heterosexuality expand, permitting men to engage in sexual or semi-sexual behaviors like masturbating together without being thought gay. I, I can see the look on your face. That's that's the one that fucking got me. Does this have there, to do with Johnson's nipple play? <laughs> 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 I I I'm 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 gonna be honest. I'm completely lost on that one. I don't. That they're, exi- they're just I saying no. You can exi- totally be a homo, and it's and it's masculine. <sighs> well, I mean, I don't I don't see the correlation there. I don't know. Really at all. There's also metrosexuality, social fluidity, which is men think and behave in ways that would have been thought feminine or gay in previous generations, and multiplicity, which I don't even, I, I don't understand that one at all. That's just a bunch of fucking gibberish. But this is just. I mean, I I think like what's didn't a, make sense what's the me. metro what's the metro one. This term is hard to define. For some people, it's about clothing and fashion sense. For some, it's about soft, ambiguous forms of masculinity, such as that associated with David Beckham. For others, it refers to fluidity or ge- f- fluidity of gender or sexuality. I mean, I feel like I feel like the society has changed so much, like that. That's I I don't feel like you need to be like a. I don't feel like you need to be a lumberjack to be masculine. I don't feel like that's what it's about. Like you can wear nice shirts and and smell nice and you know all of those things and still be masculine. Like there's a like the society is so freaking different than it was years ago that those those norms have changed a little bit. I feel like I feel like that you know. I'm not going to judge someone for being a metro no, there's, dude. There's the like you you a, watch new appearance g- of of masculinity. Yeah, you and watch new girl Schmidt? Yeah. Dude's a dude, he's the most metrosexual guy on the freaking planet, but he's I would say he's absolutely masculine, but he's also super freaking effeminate and that's fine. It's just a different it's a different time that we're living in. But ultimately, ultimately, those qualities of masculinity are still the same. You're a protector, you're a provider, you're, uh, uh, you know, all those, all those things are still the same. Would you, would you agree? Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. I, I, I feel like, I feel like you, you're questioning what I was saying. No, I just wasn't listening that closely. Thinking Typical. about moving Typical. the conversation onward, actually. Well, let's, let's do it. 
Well, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that's like the eighth. <laughs> that's like the eighth time, dude. You need. You, I focused on my on my speech tonight, not my thoughts. Right, apparently, here's so. what you have to. You need sticky notes, and every time you have a thought, I have just, an entire fucking notebook. Uh, here. I know, I know, but you need a sticky note every time you you have a thought. Just write it down, and then you know you have a new thought. Throw that one away. Write that one down. Mm-hmm. That way, your your freshest thought. Is always at the I'll have the an, forefront. A fucking pile of notes here, <laughs> and then I'll, and I won't even say like all but one of them. Oh, yeah. I, I was wondering, I guess, um, if it's different in different regions. I mean, obviously, cultures and shit are differently are different are differently. Mm-hmm. Like in, in the we're out in the middle of bum nowhere, but then if you go to say somewhere to out like LA if masculinity maybe we live in a shell and maybe all this shit is like a actual thing over there where I don't I don't know is is that I think urban environments and rural environments absolutely they're they're 100% different cuz I, I I recently started seeing this chick she is from LA and uh, she was telling me the other day, she's like, God, you're just, you're so sensitive and all this stuff. And she's like, this is, this is weird. I, I was, we were talking about it the other day and I, I explained to her, I'm like, it's like, you've never even, it's, I don't think I'm that sensitive. It's just like, you've, you've never met anyone like me before that, I don't know, expresses themselves like I do. She's like. You're right. I really, I, I haven't. So I'm that led me to believe that maybe they're just shittier people <laughs> in bigger cities. I don't know that like a, a a difference in culture. I don't know. I'm sure. Yeah, there's a massive difference in culture. I think I I would 100 percent agree. Like someone from the Midwest, yeah, gonna be 100 percent different than someone from from LA. I yeah. I think I think it's it's not so much a, a a regional thing as urban and rural. I think that's gonna be gonna be the biggest difference. Like someone from here, well, I, I should say someone from Des Moines. You know the the well, that's the biggest city we got. Freaking Des Moines and L.A. are gonna be more similar than someone from you know, where we are to, to a small town, California. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So that, that just got me wondering, like we have our views on masculinity. So what's to say that all this, all these, uh, views from these toxic masculinity people aren't actually a thing in these bigger cities, I guess is, because really what I was, I mean, be, because what's right is right. Being a, being a good person, being compassionate, being caring, being, uh, showing empathy for those around you, um, being a leader, being, um, you know, uh, just, just, just picking those up around you, those things that are inherently masculine and they, you know, they can be feminine too, but those, those good qualities that's not going to change. Like there, there are going to be different aspects to it. Absolutely. But you know, uh, out here it's, uh, you know, my husband went and, and bagged a deer and provided for the family and we're out there. He went to the freaking grocery store and, and bought some beef for us. You know, there, there are two, it's, 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 it's different worlds, but ultimately when it comes down to it, if you're still a good person, I think that's I think that's the biggest thing. I think that's the, the the biggest thing. Be a good person. Don't be a shitty person. Treat others as you want to be treated. Provide for your loved ones. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Don't be a shitty person. I think the yep. whole fucking I think the whole episode boils down into that. Be a freaking good person cuz that's what the 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 most important part is. I guess I don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're gonna. I guess they're gonna define being a good person is probably entirely different than we would. But. 
So it's hard to. Yeah, but it doesn't. Those things are still the same. Treat others with respect, and like, that's true. Yeah, you, I mean, even, how can you? How can you? You can't say that treating others with respect and and looking out for your friends and loved ones, and even strangers, and and just overall, you know, showing empathy and and compassion and and you know. But uh, I guess I guess their their thoughts there are probably if you're not one hundred percent. If you don't like 100% accept everything that anyone is doing everywhere, like transsexuals, homosexuals, if you don't 100% back them, if you don't make out with them or something, you're not respecting them. You're yeah, but disrespecting that's not, them. That's not, so they're like, you're a bad person. Yeah, but ultimately that's not being a good person, forcing for, forcing your, but they, your that's, viewpoints. That's, that's how they see it, I but think. But it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. Ultimately, if you're trying to force your viewpoints on someone else, and and this and our viewpoints are hey you live your life i'll love you either way i will i will fight for your right to do what you see fit and i will be compassionate and respectful towards you that's that's true masculinity and true kindness whereas if you're trying to force your opinion on someone and saying that hey fuck you if you don't if you don't view things the way that I do that's not true kindness that's not true masculinity or what you know what we're we've been talking about so ultimately I think ultimately I think just try to be the best person that you can be and 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 that's you know that's ultimately what it all boils down to what masculinity and boils down to if you ask me just to be clear here I and I'm pretty sure I can speak for Sam here as well don't give a fuck what you do. You respect me, I'll respect you. I don't care what you do. As long as you're not harming anyone and you show respect towards me and the ones I love, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You certainly, I, I would certainly agree with that aspect. But what time is it, Box? 9.27. All right. We can go on about for two hours. This has been the longest uh, the longest episode, just, just you and me. And we only did one topic. One fucking topic. That's a that's uh a... and we're fucking professionals. <laughs> well, that's debatable. And we only had to say oh, I lost my train of thought like thirty seven times. I only said that once, actually. Uh, well, that's I said thirty six. <laughs> that's the only time I've said that in a long time. But uh, it was it was a fun episode, guys. I enjoyed this. Uh, I I I really did. And I and I feel like I feel like the the life short live free podcast has kind of struggled to gain clarity and, and gain a direction for a long time and I, and I and I I hope that kind of with the first season we're like kind of steering the boat in the in the right direction and, and gaining some some direction a little bit some clarity a bit of an identity crisis for the last three and a half years yeah <laughs> yeah a lot a lot bit of an identity crisis but that's all right we've had fun doing it and guys uh, we appreciate you all for sticking around and for for uh for enjoying the identity crisis with us. Uh, before you uh, click out of this podcast here, or turn off the radio. I posted in the Life Short Live Free Grope group today. Grope, grope. The Life Short Live Free Grope. Yeah, we got a groping session it's going on. It's the LSLF on. orgy. <laughs> <laughs> About a book club. I know that sounds really fucking stupid. I'm to actually a lot kind of, of excited about. But that, there was Fox. a lot of yeah, there was a lot of people that were actually into that and I think that could be something that like a lot of people would take interest in and they would they would watch and they could learn things from what it's going to be it's we're not obviously just reading random books we're going to be two of them that I suggested were by Varg Freeborn which is Violence of Mind and Beyond Uda which are about handling violent situations and things like that and those are the kind of books that I think we could read or books about self-sufficiency or self-defense or the kind of the philosophy that we preach here. I think that could be interesting to kind of all get a bunch of people to read those and then we can get together and discuss them over whether it's over over Zoom or even over on the forum. We've kind of kicked the forum to the curb for a while, but I think we got to try to get that back on tracks. And I think the book club could be a way to do that. We have a lot of people interested and I think we could all learn quite a bit from doing that. I know I want to would like to read more books and learn more, but I struggle to do that on my own. 
Yeah, I think uh, I'm kind of excited for it. I I suggested the Berenstein Berenstein Bears goes to go to school, but I got laughed at. <laughs> it's the Berenstein or Berenstein? <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure. The Mandela effect. Uh, no, but I I'm excited about it. I think I think uh, I think that's a fantastic idea. So if you if you are not part of it, go over and join the Life Short Live Free Facebook group. That's where we were talking about it, and which at which point we will decide what books we want to read and kind of go from there. So I think that'll be uh that'll be a pretty good idea. I'm excited for So, well guys, that's pretty much all we got for you. Thanks for sticking around. If you've made it this far, uh, we appreciate you. You guys are fantastic. We love you. Make sure you check out our sponsors, ballistic imagery, ballistic imagery.com as well as on uh, the Facebooks. And then there's, there's of course the shy works, shy works.com as well as on Facebook and Twitter for all your uh, your Cerakote needs. Guys, we'll be back in two weeks. And uh, if, you, uh, if you love us and can't get enough of us, can't get enough of us. I can't even Jesus speak. Christ. End <laughs> the show. <laughs> can't get enough of us. Make sure you check us out on our major podcast providers. You can check out all our all our shows. And if you uh, are interested in, in joining in on the conversation, make sure you uh, tune in every other Thursday. Wednesday night at 8.30 Central Standard Time on our Facebook, YouTube, website, and Twitch. You can join in on the conversation as we talk about gear, guns, industry news, whatever trips are fancy. So, guys, that's all we got for you tonight. Thanks for sticking around. Until we talk to you next time, remember, life short, live free. God bless. God bless the United States of America. Defund the ATF. Appeal the NFA. Become ungovernable. Grow fit. Drink whiskey.